I have survived 30 days in Chrome OS. And I'm a power user, so I don't really like Google Chrome browser. I don't really like Android apps. And I really wanted to see if I could make this Chromebook I bought a while back daily drivable as a desktop power user and to use more desktop apps and to use a different browser and to use it as a video editor. A whole bunch of different things that I wanted to try. And for the most part, I succeeded my 30 days. And this is how. So let's get on the desktop and uh, jump into it. Oh. But before we do, I did not enable developer mode. So I wanted to make this a how-to article so you could do it if you wanted to. With that said, let's get into it. So this right here is my Chrome OS. I absolutely love uh, this setup for this low-powered laptop. Uh, there's some things Chrome OS does very well. Some people are like, why are you even bothering with this? And that's because I really don't like Chrome. I, I know. I like Chrome OS, but I don't like Chrome. And you can't really remove Chrome. So you can see I, I put in Brave Browser. And, and also, when it comes to base Chrome OS, the files are a little bit limiting. So I went ahead and expanded it with a basic like Thunar file manager so I can get more of a desktop feel to it and use this like a desktop. Uh, you can see I've expanded things like game streaming. So if I wanted to play like Elden Ring or something like, uh, you know, Warframe or whatever it might be, I can do it on this one just streaming from my my game system or I could go ahead and launch Steam and play some low powered games maybe some of my old like Final Fantasy 6 will play just fine on here and some old like retro emulated games would work great uh, and then we have basic terminal which most people don't care about but I'm a big terminal junkie GitHub desktop and VS code for a lot of coding and then I have Romina to remote into Windows based system so if I need to remote into like a Windows server I can do it all from here so this is a true desktop top replacement and before we jump too far into the weeds i just kind of want to go over the pros of this and kind of show you hey this is what you can do with a chrome os browser and i'm not using developer mode all this can be done on stock chrome uh, i want to just say this is what my version is starting off we're going to settings and go to about chrome os i'm on version 101 and i'm using the dev channel not the canary channel which is bleeding edge that requires development mode but just the dev channel and if you're watching this six months or a year in the future i would probably honestly be on a different channel than the dev you probably could go beta or stable i just like seeing the latest and greatest uh, but i would at least do beta today as of watching this video in early 2022 uh, because there's so many great things that uh, google has added to chrome os which we're about to talk about so right now we're going to just leave it on the dev channel uh, and you can check your version to see where you're at uh, but starting with version 96 all the way up to about version 99 that's when most of the progress was done with a lot of these dev desktop apps and optimizing uh, containers and graphics acceleration and implementing sound controls to where everything's just kind of universal and you can use it like a desktop. So that's kind of what's happened in Chrome OS just the last couple months, really. It's more than a web browser now. You know, a lot of people have always crapped on Chrome OS saying, ah, it's just a web browser. You can do some Android apps and that's all it's good for. But no, not really. You can do a lot more with it. As you see, all the programs I just laid out. Now, obviously performance is lacking in higher graphics acceleration apps or things that require an immense amount of processing. But overall, it works really, really well. One thing I would also say, the thing I think it does the best at is battery optimization and power management. It has some of the best power management. I'm gonna just record this entire thing. I've already been uh, kind of messing around for 30 minutes on it, and it was about 50% or 60% when I first started this thing, and it'll be fine. Actually, it has this is 63%, so maybe it was like 70%. This thing lasts a long time. It says three hours and 30 minutes left, but really I'll probably get four or five hours out of it just because it is amazing with power management, especially with older laptops and newer laptops, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just have noticed it doing such a phenomenal job with uh, this aspect. I'd put it up there with Apple. That's how good it is. Uh, and it's doing it on an x86 chip, which Apple could never ever get proper battery life out of with, uh, unless until they switched to the M1. But that's not this video. Now let's talk about some of the cons with this thing. Obviously there's certain things I'm cheesing here games and stuff. Most Chromebooks kind of suck for games. They're just not 
really that performant. There's not the hardware is just not there. It can't make performance appear out of nowhere. And uh, these are cheap laptops you're going to be installing Chrome OS on. So that should be noted. Another thing is Windows apps. Uh, some Windows apps just don't work very well. Wine and all those things that Linux users use. Uh, you really shouldn't be using because it's already kind of going through a compatibility or a container and you're just not going to get the performance you would on a bare metal, metal uh, Linux machine or obviously native in Windows. So some Windows applications or most just aren't quite good on Chrome OS. The other thing is if you're if you hate Google and you're not a big fan. Google account is a must here. It doesn't matter if we're not using Chrome OS where you just, you know, pull it up Brave browser. That's fine, but it should be noted, I have to sign into this laptop using a Google account. There, there's no way around it, uh, at least not that I've seen. Maybe someone makes a custom fork of it, but I'm, I'm not into using it for that. At that point, I'll just use Linux. Uh, so everything is Google. And the other thing uh, is the file system is a bit lacking. You know, I kind of already showed up like Thunar and showed how Linux file system, I like having this option, but some of this is locked out to where uh, some Google files and those types of things are locked behind here. And the file system itself is real basic, but that's the pros and cons. And now that you understand, and if you have an old laptop that you want to have good power management on, and you want to use maybe some basic desktop apps and maybe mix in some other Google Android apps, it's a fantastic option. And I made a little cheat sheet. So if you go to ChrisTitus.com, now from here, you can easily scroll down and click on 30 days in Chrome OS. I'll put a link in the description or search in the top right here for Chrome OS, and this should pop up. So the first thing we need to do is enable the Linux environment. This is really simple. We just come down into the bottom right here, hit settings, and then from settings, just type Linux and pick the top option. And this puts it in the Linux desktop environment. First time coming here, you'll have to just hit enable and then just give it as much use. I give it almost all my disk space. Uh, you can set it to a lower amount depending on what you wanna do. But just come in here, I like to enable like microphone access and all of the managed shared folders, those types of things, give it access to certain parts of the Chrome OS experience. So that way you can kind of manage everything from this Linux uh, environment. So really easy to do, just a checkbox and then follow the walkthrough instructions. And we go back over to here. So we set that up. And then we just launch into right here, the terminal. Or if you don't see the terminal there, you could actually hit your little start menu and kind of scroll down until you find uh, the terminal, which you can actually just type terminal and it will pull up. This is what you want, launch into that. And then from here, you can actually copy and paste uh, all the instructions, which let's, uh, let's increase our font just so you can see everything. And then uh, the big thing here is editing the files. And we can paste that in with just control shift and V and then hit enter. And this goes out, updates your system and installs something called G edit. So while that's installing, we'll alt tab over. We're going to actually do a pseudo edit of sources list. So we'll just come back here again, control shift V hit enter. Now, if you do get this error, we could actually switch these instructions around a little bit and do like a pseudo nano ETC APT sources list. And since we don't have nano, let's install it. Nano is just another editor. I like to use Vim, but it's more complex. So I'm going to try and leave it out of this particular setup. So we'll just go nano ETC apt sources dot list. And then all you need to do is set up this to mirror what you're seeing on the screen right now. Then hold Control and press O to write out, press Enter to save the file, and then just Control X to exit. Uh, so then with that updated, we can go on to the next one. So obviously we make it look like that, save and exit, and now we're ready to install whatever it is. So if we want GIMP, you just go sudo apt install GIMP and done. Uh, certain other things like Brave Browser or Firefox. I don't have Firefox on here. We can go ahead and add that. I know a lot of people like it. For Brave, I just copied their instructions from their website. If there's a program or a browser that I didn't list here, just look at Debian-based or Ubuntu-based installs of uh, your browser. You want to follow Debian instructions when available, but Ubuntu usually works as well. Let's go sudo apt install Firefox. Let's pretend we're a Firefox user here. All right, with Firefox installed, we're just going to 
uh, we don't, to launch these things, Terminal is only really used to install the apps and to set up the environment. But really, when it comes down to actually using and installing it, it does such a great job with integration to where we can just kind of go through here and scroll and go, oh, Linux environment. And then, oh, there's Firefox. And you just click on it. So yes, the install is not great, but you then have a fully functional desktop browser. Now, some people are like, why don't you just use the Play Store to install Firefox? And I'm about to show you, it's it's not a great experience. Uh, so let's install the Firefox browser through here just to kind of show you what this looks like. Chrome OS, just think of it as the base one, everything done through it is almost like doing it on your mobile phone. And, and let's, let's just pretend it is because that's pretty much what happens. It installs everything through the Play Store, which is the mobile version, not the desktop version, which you're about to see the big differences between just Firefox, which I don't even use it. I just kind of wanted to show it for this particular one. So it's like, hey, what, what do you want? I'm like, oh, okay, well, what is all this? This is kind of strange. Oh, okay, let's start browsing. And then you're like, what am I looking at? Look at the difference. So here's mobile Firefox. Here's desktop Firefox. Whoa, what a difference. So I, I honestly cannot stand any mobile browsers from the Play Store. Uh, I have to have the desktop equivalent. As you see, there's a massive difference uh, when installing things this method. So uh, don't do this. I, I just kind of want to uh, show that so you get kind of the idea behind all of it. And uh, again, most of the, all these instructions that we've talked about are all right here on uh, ChrisTitus.com. And if you want to install this on a secondary or an old PC, let's say you have a five or 10 year old computer, come in here. There's actually a Google extension. You can put it on a thumb drive and then load up that system, that old system with Chrome OS. And that might be a good way to utilize old hardware because this is a very closed off system, but it's very, very reliable and a little bit easier to maintain than let's say a Linux system. So I wanted to make this video just to say, hey, for those that just use their computer as a web browser, this is actually a pretty darn good experience. One that I would recommend. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what I would use Chrome OS for. Will I daily drive this uh, in the future? Uh, hell no. No, I, <laughs> no, I'm not crazy. I have a really nice laptop that I would rather use. And all of my stuff here in the studio is pretty high powered. And it would just be wasted on Chrome OS. But that's not to say this laptop doesn't have its time and place. If I was traveling and I need to be very light, I could actually take this Chromebook and use it as a desktop and use all the things that I need. So with all that said, what do you think about daily driving Chrome OS? I know this was kind of a crazy thing to do, but I truly believe you have to live in an operating system for at least 30 days before you can truly at least get an idea what it's about and how to properly use it and make the most of it. Uh, so this was me making the most of Chrome OS. Let me know down in the description what you think or down in the comments. And with that, I'll see you in the next one.